hey all welcome back to my channel hope you all are doing fine today what we are going to do is we are going to discuss about the comp sub installation we'll see what all options we get it while doing the installation okay uh, i'm gonna talk about the basics as well where uh, i'm gonna brief you about that how you're gonna find out that uh, what should be the size of your comp sub and then we'll go ahead with the installation okay so guys uh First of all, like whenever you have to do the uh, installation for your comp sub, first of all, you should decide the size of your comp sub. When I say size, you should decide that how much CPU core, how much RAM uh, and how much disk space that you require. Okay, so for that purpose, guys, uh, if you want to find out the size of your comp sub, then there is a, uh, a document that you can find it out on the documentation of so for that guys there is a link available in the documentation there is a page which uh, uh, which defines the size of the comp serve i will be sharing uh, 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 this link you can get that link in the description so on this particular link you will be able to get uh, the specification for your comp serve so you can see as per com world there are four sizes of com uh, comp serve that are available small medium large and extra large small comp serve uh, is capable of backing up up to 25 physical servers or 100 virtual machines okay for that you require four cpu cores 24 gb ram and 100 gb of disk space to hold down the sql database of your com serve so you know that sql will be getting installed with the com serve com serve uses sql database in the background to store all its metadata so to hold down that particular sql database we require a dedicated 100 gb of space disk space for the com serve database but remember that there is no uh, uh, specific disk type that has been mentioned in there so you can use a sas disk 15k sas disk that will be fine in the same way, the largest size of comp serve that we have is the extra large, which can back up, up to 10,000 physical servers or 20,000 virtual machines. Okay. Now for that, you require 16 CPU core, 128 GB RAM and 500 GB of enterprise class SSD disk. Okay. To host the SQL database. Yes, of course, apart from the disk for the SQL, you will be requiring a dedicated disk for the OS and you require one dedicated disk for your, uh, 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 what do you say, the Commvault uh, software, okay? And then you require one dedicated disk to hold your SQL database whose specification is already given on this particular chart. Now guys, there will be a question coming up or there will be a situation coming up most of the time where, you know, people will be having a mix and match of the physical servers and the virtual machines. Because right now the sizing says if you have 10,000 physical servers or 20,000 virtual machines. But what if, if I have, let's say 1,000 physical servers and 3,000 virtual machines, what happened in this case? Which particular size of this particular uh, uh, you know comps so we should select so for that guys if you scroll it down there is a, uh, a calculation that has been given in the definition okay on the same page where it says that one physical server is of course equals to one but one virtual machine is equals to 0.5 physical server means two virtual machines is equals to one physical server so if you have 3000 virtual machine convert them into the physical server so 3000 virtual machine will be equal into five or uh, 1500 uh, uh, physical servers and thousand physical server we were already having so we have total 2500 uh, 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 physical servers and for the 2500 physical servers we require the large comp serve so in this way you can convert that calculation of your uh, virtual machines into the physical servers and then you can calculate which particular size of the comp serve you require so guys this is a page from where you can get the idea about that uh, you know what uh, uh, size of the comp serve you require remember that the only question that you should ask your customer or the only question that you should have answer to select these sizes how many physical and virtual machines that you are planning to back up we have nothing to do with the amount of data when it comes to the sizing of the comp serve okay now what we will do is we'll move forward to a server on which 
we have already downloaded the Comvol packages. Comvol packages can be downloaded from ma.comvol.com or you can download from the Comvol cloud store which is a cloud.comvol.com. Okay, from any of these two portals you can actually download the packages. Uh, you require to create the account in there. So right now I have downloaded the package and if I want to see which particular version of Comvol package I have downloaded. So in the downloaded file there is a uh, 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 text document available with the name version so you click on that and you will be able to see that it's the service spec 28 that I have right now okay so what I'm going to do is I will right click on this setup file and say run as an admin and once you click on run as an admin the installation will uh, the installation wizard will come up okay so we'll wait for that particular installation wizard to come up and then we'll see here, here we go so we have a language to select you can select in what language you want to do the installation so there are multiple languages option which are available so we'll select English and say next once you click on next you will click on license agreement say I agree and click on next now once you click on next there are two options that has been given to you install packages on this computer and create custom packages to install on a different computer guys if you want to install the packages locally on this server where you are running the setup you will select this option but let's say you want to create a customized package that you will use later on to install on some different server so in that case you can say create a custom package okay but right now I have to make this server as a com server so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say install packages on this computer and say next now once you click on next there are multiple options which are available that you need to select from create new com cell if you are doing a deployment from the scratch where you are deploying your com cell you are going to select create a new com cell if you select this option guys all the required packages will be automatically selected you can select all in one and that's fine this is what you need to do and if you want to do a live sync configuration for your com serve you are trying to set up the dr for your com serve then you can even select make this com serve as a failover node or something like this like if it's a, a, a failover node uh, 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 that you are configuring right now so in this all in one you can select all the required com serve packages in a single go you are not required to select the packages individually if you go back you're going to select the option of join an existing com cell in a case if you are doing a uh, 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 you know let's say you are doing the client installation you want to install some client packages in that case you can say join an existing com cell com cell you have already deployed now you want to deploy the clients in that case you can select the join an existing com cell okay but let's say guys you are not able to understand or you have a uh, uh, you know confusion between these options or you want to customize the package selection like you want to decide which package you want to install because when you say create a new com cell we're gonna focus on the com sub installation this video is about the com sub installation so we're gonna focus on the create new com cell so when you select create new com cell it says all in one component it does not give you the option or it does not give you that freedom to uh, uh, select the individual packages all the required packages will be installed automatically so if you want to install some additional packages or you want to you know customize the package selection then in that case you can always fall back to the advanced selection and click on next I will uh, uh, stick to the advanced selection and since I want to make this server as the com server so I will select server tab and in there I will select the com server packages guys if you want to use your com server as a media agent you can select this particular agent as well the media agent but if you don't uh, like your com server is just going to act as a com server then you are not mandatory like it's it's not mandatory to select the media agent the web server will be selected automatically which is required to access your command center or any web console com cell console which is a local java based ui that will be automatically selected uh, command center console will be automatically selected workflow engine uh, 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 will be selected index store index gateway uh, content extractor all these particular component will be by default selected along with the com server okay now once you have selected the required com server packages uh, you just simply click on next and once you click on next it is going to check some prerequisite for the installation it will ask you for the installation path guys if you have taken a dedicated drive for installing the Commvault packages then you can select I'm gonna keep it by default that is C program files Commvault I'm gonna keep it to the default location and you can see what size we require for the Commvault packages it's just hardly uh, 7 GB of space that we require 
after that you click on next now since we selected the media agent package as a, 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 a to be installed it is asking you for the index cache folder this this tab will be asked only and only if you have selected media agent package to be installed if you don't select the media agent packages uh, to be installed along with the comms of this option will not be coming up in the comms of installation remember that this window is something which is specific to the media agent package we'll just keep it by default and say next okay and once you click on next it is going to ask you for the location of the comms of database path guys remember that i have just now told you when we were discussing about the sizing that there should be the specific uh, drive that we need to take according to the size of my comms of and on that dedicated disk i need to keep my databases path though in this lab environment i'm going to keep it on the c drive itself but in the practical please remember that please make sure that you install this particular sql database or you install the sql server and keep those databases on a dedicated drive you should not install it along with the packages on the c drive you should as per the best practices you should always have a dedicated disk for your database and click on next now once you click on next it is going to ask you for the disaster recovery backup path guys i have already discussed uh, a dr backup that's been discussed in detail so during the comms of installation uh, uh, it will ask you for the dr path you can go back and check my uh, uh, previous videos where we have discussed the dr backup so in the dr backup you need to define that particular path at the installation this is for the export phase okay remember that now you can define a network path or a local path as per the best practices it should always be a network path but right now in the lab in moment i'm going to select a local drive okay i'm gonna select a local drive and say next and once you click on next sorry i need to select local path and then i need to define that local path okay and say next and once you click on next guys you can see what are the packages that you have selected okay and what are the dependent packages that you have not selected but still will be getting installed so that also you can see in there which it says required packages now we'll just click on next now once you click on next it is going to start the installation it can take a little time to complete that particular installation might be it can take around uh, uh, you know 20 to 40 minutes it will take 20 to 40 minutes to complete that installation and it totally depend upon the configuration of your console sometime it can take a little more where uh, uh, you know let's say you have a less configuration in terms of cpu and ram and the disk performance on your uh, console so it might can take even one hour but generally take 20 minutes to 40 minutes for the complete installation okay so guys we'll be back on this video again when it asks us the next uh, 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 question where it is going to ask us the comms of name right now you can just uh, uh, we'll just keep on monitoring okay uh, so guys uh, the installation of the packages uh, most of the packages has been done now the next question that it's asking us is the client name and the host name of your com server so guys i have already given the description about the client name and the host name but this is for the com server so remember that whatever the client name that you are going to provide to this particular com server that will be the name of your com cell in moment as well okay now to change the name of your com cell it is possible later on but it's a little complicated so make sure that you provide the uh, 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 correct client name or the com cell name over here since it's for the com cell installation as i said uh, it will be also your com cell name in the host name like client name see guys when i say correct it's it's a like you should plan what name you want to provide it anyhow you can provide anything in there like it's just alias in there but you should decide that what alias you want to provide in the advance because to change that particular alias later on it little, little, little uh, a complicated process not much but yes uh host name uh, you have to provide the actual FQDN or the IP of that particular com server that you uh, on which you are doing the installation so that you can provide as if now it has already picked up. I'm going to keep it com server, com server only and say next. Now, once you click on next, it will ask you, uh, do you want to do a fresh installation like create a new blank databases or use existing database? So guys, if you are doing a DR recovery of your com server, you have a DR backups available for your, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, for your com serve in the past in that case you can select use existing database but right now i will go ahead and select create new database it's a 
comserve that we are creating from the scratch for the dr recovery process i have already shown you in the other uh, uh, videos that how you can perform the dr restoration but yes i will select create new database since we are creating the comserve from the scratch right now so we'll say create new database and say next now it is going to perform few more installation in there it is going to copy the few more files and we have to wait for that particular uh, installation to get complete and then we'll move forward So guys, we are almost done with the installation now. Okay, in the end, it is going to ask the username and the password uh, that you will be using to log into the console console. Now remember one thing, it is asking you for the email address as well. Uh, this is an email address that will be used as a recovery account later on if by any chance you forgot that your username password. So you can put your email account in there okay and then you can set the password for your com cell console that you will be using for the login and say next once you click on next the installation will be completed you just click on finish and once you click on finish your com server is ready just to validate you can go to star and in there there is a folder with the name com world coming up just click on the process manager and once you click on the process manager you will be able to see the com world version services and everything coming up in there uh, which version you have installed which particular uh, uh, you know uh, service pack is running so you can see it's 11.28.37 and you can see uh, the services under this particular tab of services so you can see now all the services are running fine if it's not you can just start them quickly and now you can log into the console the console console just click on the console console from the start and once you click on the console console it will ask you for the username and password you have to put the same username and password that you have given for uh, during the installation uh, just now that we have uh, that you have set it up so you just click on ok put the username and password and say ok in the com cell you have to put the com uh, 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 name com cell name that you have given as a client name while doing the installation now you can see it's logged in initializing ui uh, logged in was successful it is just loading the ui uh, for the first time it might take a little time and once that is being done you will be able to see or uh, you will be able to validate the successful installation of your comp server okay so guys uh, you can see that uh, installation coming up in there like you can see the console coming up in there so my comp server has been installed successfully guys this is how you can perform the comp server installation in your environment thank you so much we'll uh, see you on the next video thank you